water is too much higher than before, and it's getting higher and higher. So as you can see here, this is the pathway that they've created basically to get out of the water. But even then, these things get covered by water. It's up to knee high tide water in here. So the water games all the way up because it went inside the house. Yeah, it went inside the house. Yeah, of course we're scared and we don't know if uh, it getting more high or lower. That's happening all across the coastlines and, uh, and, and neighborhoods. Uh, so uh, it disturbs us to keep breathing about the melting of the, uh, the Arctics, you know, because we know that they contribute uh, directly to the rising sea level. A lot of uh, neighborhoods uh, uh, and the houses that were comfortably built uh, are now uh, very much uh, threatened by the sea level rise. Most of the people live in the coastal parts of the, you know, the urban area in Palau. And with this kind of weather, I mean, even now when it's not even extreme weather, high tide with rain, they have to, that's their daily life. They move their, you know, their tables, they move their couches. Climate change has affected this country uh, in ways that uh, we really didn't foresee. Like, for example, droughts. When we have big droughts, uh, it really does impact our economy and the sustainable livelihood of the people. And then we had two typhoons uh, uh, back to back. In basically less than 13 months, you had two typhoons that significantly impacted the, the main island as well as the low-lying and atoll islands. This is how they race it. They're racing it because of the water, and before there was no need for that. And now they have to race the houses. No more, no more. Because the tide was very different at the time. And that's why I'm with you guys. <laughs> Let's do something yeah. about this to learn about it. Yeah. And whatever we can do to prevent it or uh, help people to understand it, you know, maybe we can find help somewhere else to do something about it. As much as possible, people want to stay where their roots are. But the reality is that they need to move. So what can you do except move uh, or do some adjustment somehow? I mean, losing uh, a home is like, that's a foundation. So it's not, a, it's not an easy task for anybody to tackle. You have to talk with it as a, a community. So one of the measures that we have taken, especially with the Office of the President, is the housing crisis. And those are one of the priorities for those people that are under siege of the water. So we have a national housing program for displaced families, uh, those affected by the impacts of climate change. Uh, we get government subsidized uh, house, home, home loans that will relocate them to, of course, to higher grounds. Uh, um, some of our uh, building permit requirements now call for more housing to be elevated, uh, at least have a clearance so that it's not uh, the same level as the ground. Uh, we have to be as resilient as possible, uh, and we have to be protective uh, by taking measures that do not necessarily bring more stress uh, to what the natural elements are or man-made elements are bringing to the ocean and the environment. We're definitely uh, uh, promoting uh, renewable energy, uh, even though we contribute the least to the causes of climate change. 
We hope that by doing so, uh, that our developed partners uh, at least understand that uh, we're doing something in a small scale, but we're addressing the very problem that uh, developed countries are contributing to the emission of, uh, of uh, harmful gases in the atmosphere. We are on the front line, and uh, if we don't do something to stop the problem, eventually the front line will extend uh, to other people, and, and, and that's the sad part. Uh, it's going to involve more and more world population. So we've come past the, the time of debating or describing the problem. It's really time now to stop the problem.